Hello everyone, Silly Moustache here. Uh, my video, Why I Prefer 12 Fretters, has over 83,000 views now, so thanks very much. But today I got a comment on there from Chris Broadhurst, who remarked that my video talks about fretboard width rather than the 12 fret aspect. Well, Chris, thank you for that, and you're both right and you're both wrong, because actually five minutes and 50 seconds in, I actually do explain that. However, it's worth repeating and worth um, uh, uh, resolving. This is a 0028. It's a British made 0028. Um, my wife ordered it for me on my 50th birthday, 1998 and it has the traditional Martin dimensions. Um, Martin, as we know, was a German family and um, they established themselves in the States and were making effectively classical instruments. But Chris Martin was an innovator and he developed a new way of stressing the boards so they could be made larger and made a family of, of guitars from size two, size one, which they called standard, O, which is concert, double O, grand concert, which is this. And in 1902, they, they brought out the triple O. Now the triple O guitar was the largest Martin guitar that you could buy from 1902 until 1931. That's a long time. But the dates are very, um, very important because they also mark changes in popular music. Um, in 1916, Martin did make an even larger guitar. They made a Ditson 111 for one particular brand. Um, they didn't have Martin written on them, they called Ditsons. And they looked a bit like this. This is a Collins version of the original Dreadnought. Um, also with a wider neck, um, one and seven eighths, two and three eighths. Standard scale, like the triple O. Um, and they weren't a success, they sold them in ones and twos. <clears throat> um, but music was changing. Uh, the idea of the Ditson, by the way, was that it could be both Spanish style guitar and a Hawaiian guitar. Hawaiian music was very popular uh, during well, the World War I period, 1914 to 18, and a bit later, but jazz music was taking its place. Now, if you had a, played a string instrument in a jazz band or a dance band, you probably played the tenor banjo. But music was changing, getting more sophisticated in the late 20s, and so Gibson had been working on a whole different approach to the guitar. That was the arch top basically made in the same principles of the violin family. And um, whilst I think he made it to, to be a rhythm guitar for mandolin and banjo orchestras, um, it found a home in jazz bands and dance bands. And um, the reason is, is it didn't have the equal t um, tonality of a dreadnought, but it did have the percussive progression. <laughs> Yeah, very cutting, cut, cut through brass and woodwind, and that was important. Martin had to respond to that. So in 1929, they decided, well, they had to keep, compete with the arch tops. They tried to make an arch top, and it was very unsuccessful. They didn't quite get the idea right. Um, national guitars had come on the scene, which were very, very loud, but were very, very heavy. And so if you're playing in a dance band for three or four hours, you get backache. Um, so Martin redeveloped the beautiful triple O. They took some volume out of the body to make it a 14 fret, and they put a rhythm neck, a thinner neck on it. Um, thinner string spacing, because you're only going to be strumming after all, aren't you? That was the supposition. The OM that we know and love today was introduced in 1929, didn't sell much, and was discontinued in 1932. 
1931, Martin saw the writing on the wall and they dug out those moulds for the Ditsons and they bought out the Dreadnought, the original Dreadnought, which, to my way of thinking, is the ideal flat top guitar for playing the styles that I play, uh, bluegrass and um, old timey and things, and not as a strummer because it had that, the wider neck. And I don't play up here. And I don't tend to fret chords up here uh, when the heel gets in the way. So that isn't a problem for me. Um, this was introduced originally as an OM in 1931. Um, and even as a bass guitar, they got their marketing all wrong and it didn't sell. Just like the OM didn't sell. And it was discontinued in 1933, but they tried the same game as they tried on the triple O to the OM. They bought this out in 1934 with a thin rhythm neck, again, less body volume, the 14 fret dreadnought, which is the thing that we all know and love now. Well, I don't, but that doesn't matter. Um, and that's when the folk and country music really took off. Uh, we'd had forerunners like the Carter family playing an L5 and um, uh, Jimmy Rogers playing a triple O, Wayman and then um, Martin. Uh, but the 14 fret dreadnought was the thing to get because that and the Gibson Jumbo was the only thing you could get that would make a lot of noise with um, uh, combos with banjos and fiddles and mandolins and so that is why the 14 fret dreadnought continues to be so successful however more and more people because we're bigger now not from anything else are finding that the 12 fret offers them something that the 14 fret doesn't um, the other thing to remember is that when the 14 fret dreadnought came out Gibson finally abandoned the idea of tonal bones across the strings. They'd sought to do that all the time. One of the reasons that I play Collings is because they keep that, they retain that idea of natural balance across the strings. Whereas the 14 fret dreadnought was deliberately made bass heavy and people have become very accustomed to that and very fond of that bass heaviness, but a bit light on the treble. Whereas the 12 fret, has it all. Another reason that 12 frets may not possibly be so popular, well apart from the fact they weren't being made, um, is the slotted headstock and I think a lot of people are scared by that, um, thinking that it's more complicated than when changing strings. It's not, it's actually simpler, but it's a matter of what you're used to. See my other video on that. Um, so that's all I wanted to say. It's a matter of the history of music driving the perceptions of the makers to provide what was used and so many times something has been developed which never met the need the perceived need but found a niche elsewhere this the 14 fret om and the dreadnought was made as a rhythm guitar for dance bands you never cut the mustard in that way but they did find a place well it's particularly the dreadnought found a place as a rhythm instrument in country bands and things like that. So there you go, that's all I've got to say. I hope that answers the question. No, I was not searching for a 12 fret guitar, I was thought searching for a wider neck. But I found the other advantages of 12 frets, um, such as the improved ergonomics, the placement of the bridge, um, uses that body more effectively and puts my hand in the sweet spot and there's less left arm extension than on a 14 fret. Which is helpful if you've ever smashed up your left shoulder. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. Um, please let me have your comments. Um, and uh, if you have been, thanks for watching. Bye.